get started. Thank you for coming and braving the weather today. I'm Kelly Christensen, Director of Communications for Public Safety. And it's my pleasure to introduce Executive Director Ricks. All right, good morning. Thanks for braving the weather. I'm going to be uh, quick and to the point. I want to begin by thanking the Chief and his command staff. They took over mid-year. They've done an exceptional job. But I also want to talk about some of the challenges for public safety, in particular the police department at this time in the history of Denver. You know, last year we have more and more people moving in, the largest population we've ever had. There's a lot of challenges for the police department due to that. But then if you also look at the events that we've had and the growth of events in this community, that happens kind of organically. A lot of people are out promoting those events, but that puts a lot of stress on the police department, puts a lot of stress on public safety. And I can tell you that Chief Pazin and his very qualified command staff have done a good job dealing with that. But I also need to say a thank you to our rank and file. Those officers and civilian employees that are always nimble, they work very hard, they address some of the rapidly growing elements within our community. So we're very pleased with that. One thing that we're not so pleased about is that we're seeing some increases in certain types of crime that the chief is going to get into here in a moment. I will just simply say this. When you look at the crime rates, I want you to remember one, that we have far too many people using weapons to settle disputes at this time in Denver's history. And we need the public's help. If you see someone in an argument, you see someone that is in some type of altercation, please call the police immediately. You may be stopping an aggravated assault or potentially a murder as well. It's important for the police to be involved early and often in these cases. No one's going to be upset if you call the police department if you see someone arguing. We want to restore order and peace. With that said, I want to thank Chief Pazin for his leadership. I want to ask Deputy Chief Archer to come up here as well and her uh, to also ask, answer any questions you may have. But thank you for being here. And Chief, it's all yours. Thank you, Executive Director. We appreciate it. Uh, what was passed out, you have a copy of the 2018 crime stats. That's the uh, UCR Universal Crime Reporting as well as the NIBRS National Incident Based uh, Reporting System. Uh, we share this. This is posted uh, online and uh, really what we're here to talk about is digging into these numbers and, and seeing what trends, what patterns are taking place and essentially what we can do uh, about them. Uh, it's not a secret that our homicide rate is up and uh, we have uh, drilled down extensively uh, with our major crime and homicide unit team, uh, our analysts to make sure that uh, we identify uh, any of those patterns, uh, the causal factors, and really what we're looking for are root causes. Uh, many of the initiatives that we have uh, addressed or, or recently enacted are to directly uh, target these types of, of crimes and do something about them. Uh, violent crime is up, as you can see from the uh, year-end re reports. Uh, really what is driving that is homicide as well as aggravated assault. Uh, homicides are up 17% over 2017. Uh, in 2018, we had, uh, unfortunately, 67 people in 60 incidents. Uh, we had many uh, or, or five double homicides and one triple homicides that contributed greatly to that number. Uh, aggravated assaults, we see uh, nearly the same increase, a 16.9% uh, increase on par with our three-year average. Um, what we've noticed, uh, to reiterate the words that Executive Director Riggs uh, spoke of, is 25% uh, of uh, these increased uh, with use of weapons, firearms. Um, we need to do something uh, about this. Uh, there were 214 guns stolen in Denver uh, last year. Uh, that is up from the, the previous years. When we're looking at uh, commonalities, uh, gang violence is also up 15% uh, over the three-year period. We're actually uh, down 21%, uh, but we, we see that spike from 2017, and we uh, have uh, plans to initiate or to address that. Uh, domestic violence is also up 37% over our three-year average, 30% over uh, 2017. Uh, again, uh, we have uh, we have to do better moving forward. And as we uh, uh, alluded to, those gun crimes uh, with the homicides, uh, firearms were the most common weapon used. Uh, 47 uh, incidents resulting in 49 victims. 
Oh, I'm sorry, 42 incidents resulting in 49 victims. So I said, did I say 49 twice? I think I did. All right, uh, thank you. Um, six of those weapons were, were stolen. All 10 of our gang-motivated homicides, a firearm was used. Uh, we see uh, an increase in uh, uh, robberies in, involving the use of guns, an 8% uh, increase over the, the three-year period. Uh, we're about flat uh, compared to 2017 with that uh, same comparison. And then uh, robberies involving a, a gun accounted for 41% of all the robberies in Denver. Uh, many challenges there with regards to violent crimes. Uh, property crimes, uh, we see a, a, a slight increase in 2018 versus 2017, and really what was driving that number was car break-ins, theft from motor vehicles, and uh, we can talk more extensively about that as we move forward. Really, uh, uh, again, kudos to the analytical team in the Denver Police Department and the Safety uh, Department for really drilling down uh, into the, these uh, issues. We have launched many initiatives. We have additional programs and initiatives that uh, we will be launching or announcing uh, as soon as next week. Uh, we have uh, a couple more uh, in the coming weeks that we will be talking about. But uh, how we are going to address this increase in violent crime is utilizing our precision policing model. This is a component of the Denver Opportunity Index. There's a geographical and innovation and a technology component um, to this. Uh, some of those initiatives that we've already discussed and announced uh, is that citywide impact team, that social harms reduction team. When we talk about drilling down uh, and, and, and looking at those causal factors, we see a thread or a commonality with uh, those social harms that we talk about, mental health and substance abuse. Uh, we, uh, utilizing this team, a team of officers and a full-time mental health clinician, we are confident that that uh, will uh, assist us as well as uh, additional partnerships and collaborations with other other city agencies, other nonprofits, uh, other faith-based groups to assist us in that level. Uh, we've also initiated, uh, we, we see uh, a nexus to uh, narcotics. Uh, there were seven of these incidences where uh, narcotics were, were involved and uh, we've launched a mid-level narcotics team to help us address these uh, concerns. Uh, we started them uh, just weeks ago and uh, the results have been uh, great uh, so far. Over 35 pounds of methamphetamine taken off the streets in just the last uh, few weeks. Um, also, we, uh, we, we've seen six incidences where domestic violence was uh, involved. Uh, we uh, want to uh, continue to support the, uh, the, the tremendous uh, advocates out there that uh, continue to help uh, the victim uh, side of the equation. But to, uh, what we are doing is, is uh, launching a, uh, a program to get enhanced resources and support uh, enhanced outreach to the offender side of the domestic violence uh, equation. And we believe that uh, the program that you will hear more about here in the near future uh, addresses both sides uh, of this, and we believe that that will uh, assist us uh, in addressing the, the increase in domestic violence incidences. Um, overall, uh, our precision policing model is about uh, enhanced public-private partnerships, which again we'll be uh, discussing uh, next week, uh, as well as enhanced local and federal partnerships. Uh, we have a, a, a great program that will be announced in the coming weeks with regards to this this partnership with other city or excuse me other metro departments as well as enhancing that relationship with our federal partners as well as uh, using the the latest technology we believe that there are force multipliers out there that can help us keep uh, this city safe and uh, you will be hearing more uh, about that
Uh, overall, our precision policing model is a comprehensive approach that involves more than just the police department. Uh, violent crime is a uh, is an issue that we all need to to work uh, to address. That's connecting with community members, the nonprofits, the faith-based groups, the other city agencies, as well as our law enforcement partners uh, to address this in a holistic way. Uh, I've spoken way too much uh, as it is, so uh, at this time, if we, uh, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to, to answer them. It sounds like violence in general is up. Gang violence, domestic violence. I mean, is there any overall indicator of what's causing that, or is it just cyclical? So that, that's part of what we're, uh, what, what our team has, has uh, done the deep dive into the data. Uh, we have looked for those, those commonalities, uh, 10 incidents with uh, gang members, uh, gang motivated, as well as the six incidents with domestic violence. Uh, there, there are uh, pre-indicators in, in some of these cases, and we want to make sure that we can identify what those pre-indicators are and do this outreach uh, to folks to see if we can get them into supportive services and prevent the violence from occurring in the future. And that's what you will hear a lot more of here soon uh, with uh, Division Chief Montoya's domestic violence prevention program that uh, we have recently launched. So uh, we uh, part of our uh, model, we've actually uh, increased the staffing over there. We've added six uh, full-time members to to the gang team, but uh, the the gang unit team. But what I I, I can't emphasize this uh, enough. Um, in our preventative model, much of this is uh, looking back at those social harms, mental health and substance abuse. We want to do outreach and and identify if there are challenges within the home, if if uh, there, if young people are, are dealing with parents or grandparents that have challenges with mental health and substance abuse, uh, and, and they're uh, out, uh, they're concerned for their own safety, and that's why there's an increase in guns. We're looking at all of these, but there is just as much outreach as there is enforcement as we move forward uh, in this plan, because we want to uh, tackle this on multiple levels. Uh, it, it's more than just uh, going out and uh, arresting the perpetrator and thinking that all of the violence is going to stop in the future. This is a, uh, a multi-tiered uh, approach to really get to those root causes, the social harms. We're, we're dealing with uh, the current situation as well as looking forward in a proactive way to uh, address uh, these issues. And, and that's what we're doing with domestic violence. That's what we're doing with uh, reducing gang violence as well. Hi. How about we go? Right. So the hand just slightly uh, beat you there. I just, um, you were speaking about three-year trends being up, but then just from the data you gave us from 2017 to 2018, it's really relatively flat. Um, can, you, can you speak, can you elaborate on the three-year trends versus the one-year, and if there's any reason for the flatness? So, uh, you know, uh, as, as we see uh, historically, right, there's ebbs and flows. And uh, when, when we do our crime strategy briefing, we look year v. year as well as a three-year. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, for example, uh, this time last year, uh, if you compared the first uh, three or four weeks of 2017 and 2018, you would see a dramatic drop in homicides. We were near 10 incidents at the beginning of the year last year where uh, we are uh, at one incident. So we can't sit here and say, you know, pat ourselves on the back and, and, and claim that we're making um, progress. You need to look at those bigger pictures and make sure that you're uh, examining, uh, you know, a broad view uh, of these uh, challenging aspects and, and making sure that our comprehensive plans are there to look at the short term, making sure that we are addressing those short term challenges without losing sight of the long term uh, preventative issues that are preventative models that are going to assist us uh, as we move forward. Okay. Did I answer the question I think so appropriately? The one year, though, the 
flatness, do you attribute that to anything, or is that just kind of, you're saying it's kind of a fluke, it doesn't necessarily mean much? What, what, exactly. I'm, I'm saying that it is important to look at year v. year, but it's also important to broaden your perspective and look at that three-year trend uh, as well. The, the more information with regards to violent crime in, in general uh, gives us a better opportunity to enhance our strategies to address it. Oops, I'm sorry, Elise. When I was with the data, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me was the, the number of homicides in the downtown areas and down in the neighborhoods. Uh, I have points. When you guys looked at it, were there any trends or, or factors that are these shared? So uh, without uh, getting in front of our community partners, and, and you heard us uh, allude to these public-private partnerships that we have, uh, we recognize that, that we as uh, the police department can't solve all of these issues alone. But what I can say is we have a big announcement uh, next week to address uh, exactly what you've uh, seen there, and it is truly a collaborative partnership with stakeholders beyond uh, just the Denver Police Department, beyond the Safety Department, beyond the city and county of Denver to enhance uh, the safety uh, of the neighborhoods you just spoke of. A little off topic, but I've been asked to uh, ask you this question about proposed city ordinance being considered next week that will allow the independent monitor to oversee investigations into your position, the chief's position, uh, and just your opinion on that. So uh, we support uh, oversight. We support. We, we just got done talking about collaborations and, and partnerships. Uh, we're being transparent with uh, with these numbers, providing them as well as uh, our plans. We'll continue uh, to do that. We'll continue to work with the OIM's uh, office to ensure uh, accountability and transparency within the Denver Police Department. So uh, we're really excited about this team, and they've uh, actually uh, served us uh, remarkably well in the short amount of time that, that they have there, that they've been in place. Uh, you're right; there is a response uh, when you have a violent crime that, that happens. It has a negative impact on the community. Fear of crime. Uh, we have to make sure that we're addressing fear of crime as well. So, with this supportive team, uh, after a violent incident, we go in there and make sure that those uh, needs needs are addressed. However, uh, this team is designed to be proactive uh, as well. So uh, by uh, permanently assigning or, or by, by having a full-time mental health clinician as part of this team, it's all about those social harms. Again, instead of just looking at the initial uh, incident itself and uh, holding a, an individual accountable for that and thinking that the crime is going away, we need to look at those drivers. Mental health and substance abuse has a, uh, a, a, a tremendous uh, linkage and, and root cause to many of these incidents, and we are proactively uh, attempting to uh, address this with this team as well as uh, with our homeless outreach team, with uh, the, the clinicians that we have that are assigned to patrol officers. Uh, we want to make sure that we are looking at uh, these violent crime issues in a much broader way uh, moving forward. Yes, uh, it, it is, and we see that with uh, domestic violence, uh, our domestic violence prevention program. Uh, you, you heard that from Executive Director Riggs, the Denver Opportunity Index, using uh, the data that we have to make sure that uh, we're, we're focusing our efforts, that pre precision policing model uh, to reduce the social harms that, that often are the social determinants or the impacts that, that have uh, causal, factors, causal factors to crime occurring in the first place. So um, you are correct. That, that's uh, drilling down in, into the, the data that we do have as well as looking at any of the pre-indicators that can uh, assist us and in, in do this in an outreach and supportive way. It, 
Exactly. Uh, I, I would love to just echo Executive Director's words. If you see something, if you see somebody uh, that's in, involved in a disturbance, uh, a fight, an assault, uh, please let us know. We, we want to get there. We want to uh, help people and uh, prevent future violence or higher levels uh, of violence. So uh, to your words, see something, say something. Uh, we want uh, for us to be successful. Uh, it's better if the 700,000 plus residents uh, of Denver are assisting us in uh, this, that, that they're uh, letting people know that they're calling 911 when they see something and, and uh, the police are responding to those types of situations. Thanks, Chair. Uh, so um, uh, again, I you know it, to be respectful to our, our partners and all of the hard work that they've done over the last couple of months to, to get this. I don't want to get ahead of, of that particular uh, announcement, but uh, it's essentially it's technology using technology that that assists us in uh, not only responding to crime but preventing crime. Uh, yeah. No, I'm, I, I, I'm, you see, I talk too much, right? <laughs> with, the, with the ag assault numbers, because that's a pretty much the same percentage as the homicides and business and gang violence and DVDs, keeping up with homicide numbers. What about ag assault? I am so glad that you asked that question. So uh, we also, so domestic violence is one of the, the key uh, areas that's up, but also assault to police officers or assault to sheriff's deputies account for 30 uh, percent of, of these um, crimes. So um, that is a challenge, right? You, you, you have uh, our law enforcement team that is out there trying to keep the community safe and we saw a huge spike in assaults to uh, both law enforcement officers, the Denver police officers, as well as Denver sheriff's deputies in 2018. You're, you're right. Uh, we are a, uh, a growing city, and uh, the mayor, budget management, city council has supported the Denver Police Department. Uh, we're a growing police department in order to meet a growing city's needs. So our staffing uh, has increased, and we are continuing to work together uh, to ensure that the, the police department has the resources necessary to uh, meet these, these growing demands. Uh, we we work very closely using data to ensure that we have the appropriate number uh, out there, uh, and uh, we continue to look inward uh, as well. We've you know part of this process we freed up uh, at least uh, eight officers and a supervisor to go back uh, out on the street. So we look internally. Uh, are there things that we can do to maximize the staffing uh, that we have? This is this is something that just happened over the last couple of of weeks uh, as well at the same time that we're looking at at a growing city and growing demands uh, you know beyond just the population there there's also a growing number of events last year was a, a record year uh, for this uh, city to host many great events uh, those uh, we, we want to make sure that each one of those go off uh, safely and so those those are uh, challenges that, uh, that that the leadership within the the city has is supported us and will and we anticipate that they would continue to support us Uh, we uh, we are working towards a, uh, uh, a a number of officers to both uh, internal and and external to make sure that we do have the resources necessary. Um, let me. This is uh, part of the civilian report uh, writers that we have. Again, if uh, we want to, you know, make sure that uh, we're right-sizing the department. If if a position would be better filled by a civilian and allow for a patrol officer to get back on the street, then that's what we continue uh, to do. But um, we are we we utilize data to make sure that uh, the calls for service uh, that we have. Um, 
you know, calls for service slightly increased uh, in 2018, uh, but our officers did more self-initiated, proactive uh, outreach, uh, subject stops, traffic stops, all of that than they did in 2017. So at the same time that you have this growing um, police department and a slight increase in, in, in calls for service, I believe it was about 1%, one, 1%, one you had about a 2.5% increase in uh, officers uh, doing self-initiative, proactive, preventative work to try to uh, reduce the, the, the crime that we're facing. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Thank you.